the fibroids occur in the uterus. This is um, what the female reproductive system looks like. And through it, we want to show how fibroids look like, where they occur, and some of the problems that they can cause. This is the entry point to the female reproductive system, which is called the vagina. This is the entry to the uterus, it's called the cervix. And this is the inner cavity, or space of the uterus, which is called the endometrium. This is the uterine wall, which is made principally of muscle, it's called the myometrium. This is the outer surface of the uterus, which is made of a thin membrane called the serosa. These are the fallopian tubes, which pick the egg. Once they are released from the ovary, they also allow spermatozoa, which are normally deposited here in semen, and find their way, they swim up and get in there to fertilize the ovum, so that uh, a baby can be formed, which then can be brought back to grow in here. So when fibroids occur in here, like you can see that, that depicts a fibroid inside the cavity. This is called a submucous fibroid. It is found within the uterine cavity. This normally have a lot of problems. It causes bleeding. It can also cause miscarriage, this particular one. If this fibroid were to grow in here, where the spermatozoa are supposed to enter and the fertilized ovum is supposed to come in through, it can then cause infertility because it will obstruct that. This is called the ostium of the fallopian tube and it's two sides, to that side and to this side. This one is called intramural. It is within the uterine muscle wall, intramural fibroid. This one is intramural but it is pushing into the cavity. So it could double for intramural submucus. This may also have its problems, particularly if a woman were to get pregnant and want to have babies. Because if the baby is growing up here and then it has to pass down here <clears throat> during labor, that can cause obstruction. These ones, by and large, unless they grow very big, don't cause a lot of problems. Then there are these other ones, these other ones which come, which grow out here. They are called subserous fibroids. I told you this is the serosa. Now, these fibroids here also, the ones inside, and even this one, have been known to increase the surface area of the lining of the uterine cavity called the endometrium. And that, therefore, is associated with increased blood loss during menstruation. These ones, if there are too many, can interfere with the potential of the uterus to contract, to minimize blood loss during menstruation, and has also been associated with pain during menstruation because of their presence there. All right? Now, I said that these fibroids can also be find, found away from the uterine wall. Like they can even be found on the ovary. You may find a few on the fallopian tube. You may even find them in the structures that surround the uterus, like the bladder that sits in front the intestines that sit on the sides and even on the back. Those fibroids are referred to as parasitic because they are parasites. They are occurring where they are not supposed to be. You will find that in certain families, fibroids may tend to occur more than in other families. In fact, much as I've said that women who don't have babies, who have wide spacing or who uh, start late are more likely to have fibroids. It is not unusual to have a woman reaching menopause and never having had a child and yet they get fibroids. Now I've talked about one or two things that may happen when one has fibroids like the miscarriage, obstruction of labor, uh, bleeding, etc, etc. What are the other things that would happen if a woman had fibroids? Uh, during pregnancy uh, because of increased blood supply to the uterus, the fibroids have been shown to grow rather rapidly. When that happens, it then uh, goes beyond what its blood supply can sustain. So we say it outstrips its blood supply. And that causes what we call degeneration or damage or even rotting of that fibroid because of lack of blood supply.
when that happens, it can cause a lot of pain. All right? It can also get infected. All right? So that can happen. Um, the other things that will happen with fibroids is if it grows too large, you know, this is the uterus, it has grown too large, it will then push the structures that lie around the uterus. The uterus sits in the woman's lower abdomen or the pelvis but there are structures there in front of it is the bladder which stores urine on the sides there are the ureters which carry urine away from the kidneys downwards behind it is the rectum which is the lower part of the intestines through which uh, food uh, remnants or the stool yeah, or feces go out and all those structures are bound to feel the pressure effect of this enlarged uterus because of the fibroids. It may therefore cause frequency of passage of urine. We call it frequency of micturition. You want to pass urine very quickly. It can cause compression of the ureters and therefore cause backflow of the urine. And that may cause enlargement of the kidneys. And this can cause kidney damage. These are some of the things that worry us most. When it compresses the rectum behind, it can cause constipation because then food does not pass very easily. You may feel difficulty when you want to pass stool. Those are some of the things that happen when one has fibroids. Right.